Hey, my name is Dr. K and today I'm going to show you three ways that everyone can easily use to get leads and clients by publishing content on the internet. It's called organic lead generation. At the end, I'm going to tell you which one is my favorite and also if you have a business in the health or wellness niche, then I'm going to reveal something special for you. So stay tuned to the end. It is very important to master organic lead generation. Here is why. Basically, it will help you make your business highly profitable by getting clients on autopilot without spending money on ads. If you look at all major successful for entrepreneurs, they all have solid organic lead generation systems by consistently publishing content on one or more platforms. If you are new to my channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos on growing your health and wellness business. So now let's go to the three methods of getting leads and clients organically that work right now for the health and wellness niche and many other niches. Well, first I would like to talk about podcasting. Yeah, podcasts. Podcasts are becoming more popular. First of all, the number of podcasts is growing rapidly and the number of people listening to podcasts is also growing rapidly. Having a podcast is very suitable for the health and wellness niche and also for many other niches that because I'm specializing in health and wellness niche, I know for sure that it's very suitable for that. For example, for nutrition and for sub niches like brain health, like gut health, like mindfulness, like stress and anxiety relief and so on and so forth. I can go on forever. All right. The biggest advantage of a podcast is that it's very relatively easy. It's relatively very easy and it doesn't require a lot of technical know-how or technical equipment. You can basically use your smartphone to, to record your podcasts. I know, for example, Russell Brunson, you may know him or not, but he is a very famous internet marketer. He has a podcast where he records 7 to 10 minute episodes every day while driving to his office in the morning. So he records them actually while driving and he uses only his smartphone. So having a podcast is very easy, it's very cost effective and it is a very effective method, method of generating high, high quality leads and the biggest advantage of leads coming off of a podcast is that they are warmed up and they are highly motivated which means you get high quality leads who doesn't want that and usually the listeners and you have to pay attention to this carefully the listeners of podcasts are usually more capable and more willing to pay big money for good results so if you have a good high ticket offer, for example, which has proven to work and proven to give the desired results of your ideal customers, then having a podcast is almost mandatory. So how that works, how, how could you generate leads from the podcast? All you do is that you publish at least once a week and at the end, or at different occasions uh, or different moments during each episode. It depends on how long your episodes are. If you have lengthy episodes, then you have plenty of opportunity to add a call to action. If you have a short episode, then I, I would recommend to add your call to action at the beginning and at the end or at one of them. So you add a call to action to the audience asking them to visit your website or funnel for a free offer. For example, for a free 
class for or a lead magnet right for a PDF or you can also ask them directly to book a call with you or your sales team and then after getting the lead magnet they can they can be added to your email list and then you have the opportunity to offer them more to make more and more offers right so this is uh, is very attractive and it's very very cost effective way of getting leads so let's go to number two number two in my opinion is YouTube all right so having a YouTube channel is actually very lucrative for a lot of businesses and it's very effective for the health and wellness niche especially for the fitness for example or the yoga people you know yoga and fitness and similar similar sub niches where you have to show the movements and you have to show the exercises that excites people you know and that gives authority and it establishes the relationship with you so that's where youtube will be powerful the biggest advantage of using youtube is that it's an evergreen platform because it's a safe engine for video content so it's going to work not only for short term but also forever actually as long as youtube stays of course and as long as your youtube channel remains active the process is the same as a podcast you should add a call to action at least once during the video and also a few more times in the caption or description of the video the major drawback of youtube is that it might seem challenging for some people who have a high threshold in order to appear on video many people may think that you need sophisticated technical equipment but that's actually not the case i can assure you that also and you can use your smartphone as in a podcast you can use just your smartphone or any basic equipment for example what i'm using you can use your webcam together with a screen recorder that's what i'm currently using you know hey look look at me you can probably tell right i'm not technical whatsoever and i'm on youtube so i would highly recommend you to consider youtube especially if you are in in the fitness and yoga and similar niches right but also for everyone actually because audiovisual content shows more of you and it shows your character and it, you know it, it makes the connection with your audience just a little bit stronger and a little bit tighter right so look number three very straightforward i think and you may have already thought of that and that is social media when it comes to social media for the health and wellness niche well i can reveal to you that instagram is actually the number one platform it offers you know a lot of a lot of marketing content for the health and wellness niche and in the in the form of images and videos you know you can show everything in instagram that you want that's why instagram is very suitable and very attractive and one of the advantages is that it's easy to use and it can be used at any time because it's basically a mobile uh, application so you have it with you all the time if you want to use in instagram which i highly recommend i'm going to tell you one important secret that's working very well right now recently instagram reels are becoming very popular if you are not using instagram reels then you are probably leaving money on the table and maybe losing a lot of potential clients and potential leads right so instagram reels are becoming popular and actually instagram is transforming their app from being an image platform into being a video platform because they know the future is for video right so reels and the second thing is live video on instagram these two are pretty much the fastest and easiest way to get your content out there to reach many of your potential clients 
image content on Instagram still works. It works very fine and you can post both of them, both reels and, and, and image content, but you will need far more content to get the same reach that you can get with reels. So reels get better reach and live video is even more effective than reels. But the drawback of Instagram reels is that it's limited to a maximum of 60 seconds. Well, if you are going live, you can go for a longer time, of course. But look, at the same time, six seconds is also an advantage because it means you can publish a lot of content and you will be and your content is going to be focused and it's going to be sharp and to the point, right? Because the attention span of audiences is becoming, you know, is becoming shorter and shorter, and that's why social media are keeping the things so tight for us. You can publish maybe four or five reels a day, and that's a number I would highly recommend, actually. The thing that you have to take care of is selecting suitable hashtags. Also, hashtags are very important for Instagram. So, in a different uh, episode, we focus on all of these tactics in detail, Instagram Reels, Instagram Live, and hashtags, and what have you. But now the purpose of this episode is just to give you an overview. Hey, let me tell you, besides Instagram, hey, our old friend Facebook, don't forget that. You know, Facebook is still the number one major social media. And it's still attractive for the health and wellness niche. For, for example, the mindfulness niche, especially if your target audience is in the age of th above 35 or above 40, then Facebook is definitely a good choice to start with. And let me give you a secret, Facebook groups. Facebook groups are the name of the game. Many businesses thrive only and completely on Facebook groups. You can have your own Facebook group, but you can also participate and be actively involved and engaging in the Facebook groups of others, right? So Facebook group, you can use it to connect with your people. You can use it to convert and close deals. And But you can also use Facebook groups in order to deliver your content and to deliver, you know, the promise or, or the thing that you are selling to them, especially if it's a coaching, uh, you can just host it on a Facebook group and it's entirely free. So it's highly recommended to consider creating your own Facebook group if your customers or potential customers are found basically on Facebook. So how does it work actually when you have your own Facebook group? You can go live to teach and coach your group members once to twice a week and then throughout the week you can post images and text content on a daily basis of several times a day, right? And then every, every now and then you throw in a call to action or a lead magnet in order to collect emails. It's very advisable to customize your personal profile in order to make it into a lead generation machine, right? There's a separate video uh, on how to optimize your Facebook profile in order to capture all potential leads. So if you need to understand that, just search for that video depending on when you are watching right now. So. The last uh, social media platform that I would like to mention very briefly is LinkedIn. So depending on your target audience, LinkedIn is definitely a good option and a good source of leads, especially if you are helping professionals, for example, executives and, and business owners and, and, and physicians or lawyers and what have you, right? We will devote a series of videos for more in-depth uh, discussion of how to use each social media platform for organic lead generation. Depending on when you are watching this series or some of them may have been published already. So you can search the channel or you can search 
the the playlist uh, to see uh, all of those series. So to summarize, social media for health and wellness niche a very important and very relevant platform to generate leads and the number one choice should be Instagram and Facebook groups and Facebook profiles and LinkedIn are also highly recommended depending on your sub niche and, and depending on the demographics of your target audience. Well, okay, now let's go to the last and number four choice that you can consider to post your content. Surprisingly, it is blogging. Believe it or not, blogging still works very nicely for the health and wellness niche. Here's why. It's very simple. Because people, including your target audience, I'm sure about that, are more likely than not to search for their specific topics of interest using search engines. So if you are helping people to sleep better, it's very likely that these people right now and all the time are searching on the internet to learn how to improve their sleep. So a blog is, is actually a blog is nothing than a long text post written in a way to make it easier to rank on search engines. So using the so-called search engine optimization. For example, in the weight loss niche, even the term weight loss itself is a very popular uh, keyword on search engines. And almost all health-related keywords are very popular. That's why posting regular blogs can be very successful. The advantage is, is that if done correctly, a blog post will generate leads for a long time. Basically, as long as it remains on the internet and as long as the keywords are popular. The major disadvantage is that it's very slow to rank and it may take at least a few months but in some occasions up to a year in order to reach the number one page on search engines. However, it's, it's geared towards growing for the long run, as mentioned earlier. So there are many techniques to make ranking faster, for example, by using long term keywords. For example, instead of weight loss, you may rank faster by using weight loss after childbirth or how to lose weight using yoga or lose five grams in one month or health ways of losing weight. So if you like writing, I would highly recommend starting a blog as soon as possible. And I assure you it will pay off for the long run. And as an additional tip, you can use the transcriptions of your video content or your podcast content and modify them to curate blog posts. That way you may you make optimal use of your content. Now we are coming towards the end of this episode. I'm sure you are curious about my recommendation. Or you may be wondering how to choose one platform over the others. Actually, I don't recommend one specific platform that will work for everyone. It depends on your niche your audience and what you are comfortable doing. If you love writing, I would highly uh, recommend you to start a blog for the long term and probably Facebook for the short term. If you are comfortable with video and you are in the fitness or in the yoga niche, for example, then YouTube channel will be more suitable than a podcast. However, if you are, for example, into some type of psychology or counseling or personal development or brain function or the stress and anxiety field, these niches are very suitable for podcasting. So how to start? I would recommend to start with one platform and master that one and then gradually add another one as you grow. Don't start two, three, or four twice. That's a definite 
recipe for burnout. Start just one platform, focus on it, master it, and then as you become confident with that platform and as you are as it's working for you on autopilot, then add another platform. All right. So to summarize the four best working ways of getting organic lead generation for the health and wellness niche are social media, especially Instagram, blogging, podcasting, and YouTube. Each one has advantages and disadvantages depending on yourself and your sub niche and also on your audience, of course. If you are, look, if you are working in the health and wellness niche and you would like to learn proven principles and strategies to skyrocket your profits, then I have a special free class for you. In this class, you will discover the three fundamental principles that separate success from failure. Those who apply these principles succeed and those who don't fail. The link to this special free class is in the description. See you later, my friend, and take it easy.